Good afternoon, everybody. Friday afternoon, week one, DFS NFL. I got to apologize. I forgot to release the quarterback box checkers last night. You know, after several tags and communications <laughs> telling me I forgot, I apologize. I thought I had released it. I've done a couple of other small videos and whatnot. You can obviously scroll through the timeline of the YouTube channel here and come back and grab the rest of them from all of the positions, running back, wide receiver, tight ends, uh, defenses, etc. So we're narrowing down short lists with box checkers. It's a very simple way to go by and trim the fat and get down to the best of the best picks. You're going to miss a few. There are going to be some outliers. There are going to be great matchups that don't check all the boxes or don't hit the key boxes. And that doesn't mean they're not great. Like Let's talk about running backs really quickly. Christian McCaffrey is not favored. He's at home. He gets a lot of targets. We know how strong his floor is. doesn't mean he's a bad matchup. It just means he doesn't hit box checkers. It doesn't mean he shouldn't be on your radar. It just means he doesn't hit box checkers. Box checkers is not going to be an all-inclusive perfect system, but it is going to quickly trim the fat and get you down to the best of the best. So let's dive in here in just a second and show you the quarterbacks. But, of course, my name is Chapadong. I'm senior coach and contributor at DFSArmy.com. And, of course, I am the content editor at the website. So it's pretty easy to figure out where to find me. The question is, where do I find you? Follow me out on Twitter at Chapadong. Comment inside the YouTube channel. Maybe hit me up with a like and a subscribe. Ring the notification bell so these videos drop to your phone immediately. And, of course, contemplate becoming a member at DFSArmy.com where you can use coupon code CHOP, C-H-O-P, and deliver a 20% off discount to your inbox or to your account right out of the gate. To be honest with you, everybody loves giveaways. Take a peek here at our, if I could get the darn thing to scroll down, take a peek at our DFS Army Twitter channel as well, and you'll see you can win a $20 entry into the Fantasy Draft Million Dollar Contest this Sunday by just simply retweeting, liking the post, following DFS Army and Fantasy Draft, and you get yourself a free $20 entry, potentially, if you got to win you, I guess you win the raffle. And you get yourself into that contest where you could possibly turn that thing into thousands of dollars, maybe even a million if you're the lucky winner. Who knows? Let's dive into the research station. We've cut off these three games here. We're basically dealing with the main. This is FanDuel. It works on DraftKings, too. But what I'm looking for when it comes to the inflection points of who consistently hits value more often, home quarterbacks hit value more often. Favored quarterbacks hit value more often. Those implied to score over 24 points hit value more often. Those implied to score over 26 hit value even more often. And then efficient quarterbacks that are leading the league in QBR. You can easily go to ESPN.com, search total QBR, find the top, say, 10 or 12. Those are the top third of the most efficient quarterbacks in the league. You might incorporate some touchdown percentages, touchdowns per uh, per snap, et cetera, et cetera. Those are other efficiency metrics that you can definitely use to determine which quarterbacks are the best of the best and create your own box checking formats. But I tend to use what I can find here in the research station and QBR on top of it. I'm not going to show you QBR today. We, we should know kind of who the more efficient quarterbacks are, and that's not going to change a lot from week to week. But if I just sort out less than zero for the favored quarterbacks on the list, there they are. Cuts them right in half. Half of them are favored, half of them aren't. And then I take down who is greater than 24 points. So that's really 23 and a half because if I take 24, it does not include 24. And I, do, I don't mind 24. Oh, where are we at here? Patrick Mahomes, Carson Wentz. Russell Wilson, Baker, Mayfield, Jared Goff, Dak Prescott, Cut, Phillip Rivers. Look at that. Look who's not on that list. I don't see Jameis Winston on that list. And to be honest with you, he's probably one of my cash quarterbacks this week. Why is that? I'm really torn between a couple. And Mahomes is awfully darned expensive, right? We know he's a phenomenal play, but we know that this is the type of matchup against Jacksonville where he's going to probably test his floor more often than he's going to test his ceiling. Do you really see him throwing for 400 yards and four scores against that secondary? I don't. If he does, Travis Kelsey probably gets three touchdowns. But I don't see him doing that. And I don't think most sane people do. And why would I pay so much for a quarterback when I don't really need that anyway, I can find similar matchups. Look at this list. I can find similar matchups 
for 7,600, 7,900, 7,800, 7,500, 7,400. I mean, Lamar Jackson's not on this list because he's not implied to score a ton of points, but we know he has the rushing floor to still hit value, right? On this list right here, I would be torn down immediately to Carson Wentz. 7,600, one of the cheaper QBs on this list. I think he's probably safer than Dak, safer than Cousins, safer maybe than Rivers, right? Matt Stafford's awfully intriguing, but Matt, Matt Stafford's on the road. So is uh, Mahomes, actually. But I, Carson Wentz is probably where I'd be going on this list. Now, again, I'm going to include just uh, Jameis Winston in my personal cash game consideration because, like I said, box checkers is not perfect. It's not the end-all and be-all. It's just going to quickly trim the fat. And when you look at other stuff around the industry, ownership percentages and whatnot, you need to dive into other chalky plays. Now, I shouldn't say quarterbacks are chalky because – their ownership gets so spread out week to week. There really isn't a ton of leverage to be had at the position. But we can scroll over and we can look at who typically allows quarterback fantasy points. And Jacksonville kind of doesn't. Tennessee kind of doesn't. That hurts Baker Mayfield. That's interesting. Russell Wilson going up against Cincinnati. Hey, if you wanted to tell me that he should hit value, I'm all for it. But I personally believe Chris Carson's going to get in the way with such a spread. But if Russell Wilson is facing the second most points allowed in 2018 to, to the quarterback position, you kind of got to consider the guy that. You talk about getting some lower ownership in your cash games. So that's how you're going to do it. But again, I'm stuck on Carson Wentz. It's a top 10-ish matchup in Washington. We know Washington's probably a train wreck. There's a whole lot of... Uh, factors pointing that direction if i wanted to go pure upside i might even look at maybe a kirk cousins or something like that who's projected to get into a shootout and is probably going to be in a game where he's going to be needed so i mean there's just name after name after name that are sort of cash viable but would i consider a jacoby Brissett? me no would i consider um you know who, who else out josh allen no uh kyler murray no I don't need him yet. I haven't seen enough yet. And these are going to be popular, fairly popular in tournaments or, uh, you know, in Kyler Murray's going to be popular in cash games. I'm just going to roll with the, if you look at the game logs of Carson Wentz, he's sitting between 14 and 20 points, like, all the time. I just personally think that a Jameis Winston type has the upside to 30 points and is probably going to be needed because his defense is pretty crappy too. I don't think that Washington can keep the game close. I don't think that Carson Wentz is a bad play. I just don't think he has the upside to fall into a shootout that Jameis Winston might have. And for that price range of 7,500-ish on uh, FanDuel, that's where I would go. I have no need for Patrick Mahomes in that matchup. So really and truly, if you go back through, you notice that in the running back matchups, we talked a lot about uh, a core play. So if, if Jameis Winston and Carson Wentz are the two guys that I'm kind of stuck on, maybe a Lamar Jackson, okay, then those would probably, that's a list of about three guys. If I look at, you know, Christian McCaffrey be great, I don't think that I need the value there because it forces me to punt in a couple of places that I don't really want to punt. Uh, Saquon Barkley, same type of situation. If I cut these guys down so that I get Kamara out of there because he's not on the main slate, and you can do this on any slate, the afternoon slates, the early slates, whatever you want to do. Uh, Dalvin Cook, Locke, uh, David Johnson, probably not needed, Le'Veon Bell. Nick Chubb, is, is a, uh, he's on my short list. I wouldn't call him a lock, but he's on my short list. And the reason why is he's at home, he's favored, He's the, the game script should lean his way. A lot of people are actually on Baker Mayfield and uh, OBJ. I don't know why. Nick Chubb is a home favorite with the game flow going to, I know rushing defense, I guess Tennessee's not in a great spot. So if he gets held back, that's a, I still think he has a high floor. I still think he sees, you know, 20 touches on the day. And for that price, I think it's a good spot. I don't mind Eckler too much. I'm afraid Eckler gets vultured at the goal line uh, by Justin Jackson or whatever the dude's name is that's out there with him. Uh, Leonard Fournette is another one that's on a short list for me, along with Nick Chubb. The reason why Fournette isn't favored, but he is at home. Kansas City gives up second most points to running backs, right? And he's supposedly going to factor a little bit into the passing game. So he's a little bit more game script proof maybe than a Chubb. If uh, Kansas City does get out to a lead and uh, Nick Foles and the Jaguars 
have to play catch up, then uh, Fournette is more likely to be used in the passing game because he has no competition for touches in that backfield. So looking down the list a little bit more, Gurley knows Ezekiel. Great tournament play though, actually phenomenal tournament play. Uh, Ezekiel Elliott, Carryon Johnson maybe not making my list. Chris Carson is my other lock. I'd be looking at Cook, Carson, and either Wentz or uh, Winston. I might have outside looks at Chubb, Fournette, and I don't think that I need much else when it comes to the running back position. I just don't think that I need to see it. When I come to the wide receiver matchups. We're really cruising along in this little video. We might just condense these down. We don't need to do them position by position. Julio Jones, Odell Beckham, they're all fine plays, but again, they're expensive. Don't know that I need to do anything other than that watching that magic number that I mentioned in the wide receiver video of 8,500 uh, on FanDuel and DraftKings being one of the markers where wide receivers tend to hit value. There are not a lot of them that are priced up at that level right now, so I don't need to pay up for that. I might later in the year, but right now the prices are pretty low. Tyree Kill, don't need him. Uh, Mike Evans, very intriguing. Thielen, intriguing. Uh, Keenan Allen, probably not. Diggs, intriguing. Amari Cooper, eh, I don't know. Cooks, I, Cooks is sitting in a in a like a equilateral triangle. You know, a, 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 a what's the word I'm looking for? A triumvirate of wide receivers where they're all three used pretty equally when they're all healthy. Cooks has had the better days when they're healthy, but Cup is a red zone target. Cooks is more of a deep threat target. Uh, if Cup runs out of the slot, I like him a lot more as more of a higher floor type of guy with a little bit of upside. Uh, Cooks has the ceiling, but he's probably got a little bit lower floor. Curtis Samuel's probably going to be chalky. He would be okay. Galladay, I like the idea of Arizona has nothing. Uh, Boyd loved the idea of garbage time. We talked about under 18 points implied and leading to inept offenses that uh, can't compete in the game and then the other team backing off. When you've got a 9 or 10 point favorite in Seattle at home, they should be backing off in the third and fourth quarter and that should open up for Tyler Boyd. Just don't let him get behind you, boys. We'll give them all the underneath crap they want. And if they want to pile up the points, Boyd gets 60 yards or so in the fourth quarter. There's six points right there. If they're up two scores and they let him slip into the end zone for one, who cares? He might get 12 points in that fourth quarter alone and hit value on that alone with a couple of receptions. The odds are that that is a script that should play out. Uh, Lockett, I don't know. Carson, if Carson's running the ball late, what are they going to really throw to Lockett for? This is going to be can't hand on the rock off. And the way I see it going at home, where they love to run the ball and they don't like to throw it really anyway, Carson's the factor here. And I'm not running Carson and Lockett in the same lineup without Russell Wilson, and Russell Wilson's not going to be my cash quarterback. He may be in consideration, like I mentioned, but it's going to be Wentz or Winston. So I've got to pick between one or the other, and I'm going to like Carson over Lockett. Godwin, probably a very, very good, strong, strong cash play in that game. Williams, Alston Boyd, Cooper Cup, we talked about him. Landry, Dede Westbrook is a cheap option. Uh, another cheap option that you're starting to hear the names of is you know like a like a Cole Beasley. I don't know why you would target. I see the point on a PPR site, but I don't see why you would target a Cole Beasley. I don't see why you would target a Cole Beasley in the Buffalo offense facing the Jets. I would char target a John Brown and go for the win in a tournament before I would target Cole Beasley. That's just me. Running backs we just mentioned as we went through, quarterbacks we just mentioned. Let's go ahead and wrap this one up, send it out of here for the week. We can talk a little bit more next week. If you like this type of content, you like the tools, you need to become a member, dfsarmy.com. Coupon code CHOP, C-H-O-P. Get set 20% discount delivered to you. And from there, you can certainly come in and ask any of the coaches questions. I showed you before in some of these videos some of the coaching notes that we have piled up for every single slate right now, FanDuel, DraftKings alike, uh, Yahoo even, short slates, big slates. Everything is in those coaches' notes with confident star ratings, core plays, core picks. If you wanted to know the four guys that I am absolutely married to right now, let's go ahead and reveal it. Winston is definitely prob is probably my, my tiebreaker or my coin flip at quarterback. Carson and Cook aren't going anywhere, and Dede Westbrook is probably my receiver. But after that, um, Hunter Henry's my tight end, I should say that. That's the non-negotiable for me. Hunter Henry, uh, Cook, Carson, and probably 
uh, Jameis Winston. Now, who will be in my flex? I don't know. Who will be my receivers? I don't know for sure. I'm kind of jostling those guys around, but I mentioned a lot of those names for you. You should have an idea of who the small list is. Those are all solid cash game plays. Some of them have upside. If you correlate like you run a Godwin and a Winston, you could certainly correlate that, and if all things hit fairly well with upside, you could definitely win 100-man leagues, two, 300-man GPPs, things like that. You're not going to win five, 10,000 person GPPs with that type of play, but that's that's not what I do. I'm interested in winning frequently. I'm interested in winning 70% of my 50-50s and my double-ups, 70% of my head-to-heads. I'm interested in those types of numbers. I'm not chasing the Millie Maker where I have to have an outlandish pick go off, but I will throw some numbers in GPPs, and if I was going to do that, I like the uh, John Brown call. I like Todd Gurley quite a bit. These would be my lower-owned plays that I would expect to, to go off. I'm not really game-stacking a ton of stuff. I'm not going to be one of these narrative guys that says, you have to stack this game. It's going to be lower. I'm looking for the players that could surprise people and really go bonkers. And I think that those are a couple of plays that I'll infuse in what is already a fairly chalky core because you know, I'll leave you with this analogy. You know, your chalky core gets you uh, invited to the wedding, but the one or two low owned plays that hit are what get you sleeping with the bride. That's your John Brown. That's your Todd Gurley. That's the type of play. I'm going to get to the dance. I'm going to get to the wedding with a chalky core that's going to get me kind of up there towards that min cash. And then I'm going to rely on a couple of low, low owned upside plays to hit, push me up deep into the money. So if you like that type of advice, like I said, like the channel, subscribe to the channel, ring the notification bell, jump on in to dfsarmy.com and ask the questions get the coaching that's going to make you a better player that's what we're focused on this is friday this has been box checkers this week i hope to see you guys winning lots of money share with me in the comments if you like uh you know like your team go ahead throw it out there who knows maybe you guys uh, can also win some money to play smart it's week one expect the unexpected a lot of random things happen and let's come back for week two bright and early on monday morning next week take care guys